And to a far lesser extent, you're on trial with humans down here that see you physically. So you got to think of yourself like, you know, hi. You might as well be, you know, what was it? Prince William and, and um, what do they call themselves now? The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Everywhere they go, they got no peace. They got no privacy. They can't even go away on vacation without somebody with a long lens trying to find out what they're doing and whether she's topless. I mean, can people be more petty? No, they can't. Okay, well, that's happening to you too. Everything you do is a subject of speculation. Everything you do has to have a policy. Okay, Dad, it's time for breakfast. Do I eat bran flakes or do I eat uh, egg McMuffin? Now, that sounds like an incredibly petty, stupid decision. Why does it matter? But it does matter. Because it isn't about the breakfast. It's about your thinking skills. So now you have to make an executive decision. How much time am I going to spend trying to turn this into a policy? Or am I just going to say the heck with it and just eat whatever I feel like? The more times you make the latter decision, the more times you're going to make that same kind of decision on other things. You've got to learn patience. You've got to learn thinking something through. Because your job in eternity is to be a ruler. This is the part I can't stand, but I understand its importance and value. The parent has to think for the kids. How do you learn to love kids who are screaming all the time and disobedient all the time? Well, how did Moses learn how to do that? Because that's what his job was. That's what you got to do. Okay, but you got to develop thinking skills, ruler thinking skills, in order to do that. So the first thing that's coming up is you got to regard yourself as a public person. In every decision, you got to learn to be aware of that. And every decision you make, every word you speak, you have to regard it as if it were going to be front page news. That's one of the reasons why I make these audios and videos. I'm learning how to be a public person. I hate that idea more than anything in life. I want to be on a desert island all by myself just with my Bible study materials. That's what I personally want. Okay, well I don't get that. I would rather just be, you know, a cook in the back room of a kitchen, you know, barefoot and pregnant, or not pregnant, actually, never wanted to be a mommy. You know, just unseen, just by myself, alone. I've always been alone. Well, I don't get that. Now maybe you have a different goal. Maybe what's heaven to me is hell to you. Maybe you've always wanted to be a public person and so what God has done is just kind of stuck you in a back room. Whatever it is you want really strongly, he pushes you in the opposite direction. And then once you've accepted that direction, then he changes it on you and gives you what you wanted the first time. That's what he's done with everybody in the Bible and that's what he's doing with you too. So your first thing is you are a public person. You need to think, okay, how do I write this email? What if it was going to be front page news? You are, th this is really helpful training, okay, and if God has a different set of principles in mind for you, he'll let you know. I'm just trying to ferret it out to extrapolate to the, the generic. You have to regard yourself as a public person because the Bible says you are. So, how does a public person act? Well, he acts as if he's living in a goldfish bowl because he is. Every little thing he says, everything he wears is going to be commented on. Because people are just... Really, the reason why that happens is people can't think. 
So they're looking to something that they consider higher than them, and anybody public is considered higher than them. And they're looking for, like, imitation. They're like kids. They want to imitate. They don't have... They can't discern a thing on its own intrinsic merits. They have to go by outers. Like what blue dress you wore. You are wearing a blue silk dress. So if I imitate wearing a blue silk dress, then I'll look like Kate Middleton. Huh? But see, the peasant can't think. So people will imitate you. So you've got to start thinking of yourself as a public person. Besides, you really are a public person, and also every single thing you think and do is going to be broadcast at the judgment seat of Christ. Remember when he said everything hidden will be made known? So think of yourself that way. What if what I'm doing now is front page news? Secondly, policy. It's, you can't, there's no, it just, it, again, the peasant has a private life and what he does nobody cares about. The royal doesn't have a private life and everything he does that people shouldn't care about, they do. Okay, so you can't just eat any old breakfast. Bran flakes do this, eggs do that, whey protein does this, yogurt does that. What do you pick? It's not about breakfast. It's about decision-making based on the facts available on the ground. If you do that a lot, bing, 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 and it's a painful, annoying thing to make such a big nagila out of such a small thing. But you're learning how to think, and you're learning how to think faster, and the more you do that, the more you're training to become a king because that's the thinking process of a king. God throws himself down before the truth. The truth he created. He still throws himself down before it. Psalm 138, 2. B. End of verse. You put the truth above your own person, reputation, name. Well, that's what you're training to do. Because that's what Christ does. That's what he did. So, one of the other hints, besides regarding yourself as a public person, is you have to regard yourself, you have to regard every little thing, decision, based on a policy. And you'll make a lot of mistakes, and you'll revise the policy over time. you get more skilled into determining policy, and they're all your own life. Or, you know, anybody you really do have charge over, like your kids, people at work. But even when you're sitting watching TV, what should you watch? No, I'm dead serious. What should you watch on television? What would be most helpful to your spiritual life? Sometimes watching something lewd and nasty is helpful to your spiritual life, and sometimes it's not. I'm not particularly fond of those things. But sometimes about five minutes of it, which is about as much as I can stomach, is helpful because when I watch it, I think, gee, that's all those people have to look forward to. You know, there are whole bunches of people on this planet that all they know of life is titillation. And it's not even what it's cracked up to be on TV. It never works that way in real life. You got some love scene in a movie. Oh, that bores me. But you know what? People fantasize about having a life like that. That's all they know about pleasure. And they'll never get it. It doesn't work that way in real life. But that's that becomes like their standard, their goal, their heaven. And that's all they know. Some people live to get high. That's all they know is this cheap, Emotion that always has this big letdown when it's done. That's all they know. That, that, that just drives me crazy when I think about that. The low level of 
enjoyment that people have. So you got a palsy. And that sounds boring. Oh, I'm forming a palsy. Palsy about watching TV. What do I watch? When do I watch it? How much do I watch it? Why do I watch it? And am I using one John one nine while I watch it so I can watch it in God? Because then you're learning something even more. See the stress on wanting to learn God it has to kind of like run everything. The litmus test. I mean, what the heck's the point of learning Bible if you're not learning God from it? What the heck is the point of even believing in Christ if you're not going to see him? Okay? So if I'm believing in Christ in order to live with him forever because I want to be with him, then why not just turn everything else in my life into a vehicle for being with him, right? Well, then you got policies because certain things fit and certain things don't. Something that fits at this moment isn't going to fit two moments from now. And you think, oh boy, you're making it complicated, Brian. Well, depends on how much you want to learn. There is also, of course, just as in anything else, some period where it's whatever. You know, maybe, and I don't know that this is true, I'm just picking it for, you know, illustration. Let's say that, that you could be real sure that there was an hour in a day where you just do whatever you wanted. Didn't matter if it was right or wrong or anything else. Because there's an allotment for that too. I just don't know how much it is for anybody. Okay, so you make this policy. Okay, for one hour, I'm just going to watch anything on TV because I just feel like it. In other words, no rules. No policy. No policy is, has its own slot just as much as having policy a slot. So maybe one day you get up for breakfast and you developed a policy about breakfast, what you should eat and why, and you're really happy with that policy. But, you know, today, Saturday morning, I'm not going to apply any policy. I'll eat whatever I want, whether it's good for me or not. Okay. Because that's got a slot, too. You see what I'm getting at? On the one hand, you're a public person. You got to remember that. Because as a king forever, that's what you are. Everybody's going to copy you. You're going to be in every magazine and in every newspaper of your kingdom every single day, forever and ever and ever. Get used to it now. This is why I consider this whole kingship thing just drives me nuts. It's the last thing on the planet I want. Number two, have a policy for everything. Or have a policy at least for X number of things. You know, you've got to determine all that before God. And of course, the flip side of that is have times when there's no policy. Because it isn't about performance. It's about maximizing the enjoyment of. The whole purpose of policy, hierarchy, superior, inferior, rules, public, private, is to how should they all fit together so that the enjoyment of every part of everything is maxed out. Because that's God's design philosophy, essentially. When he ordered truth be free, he also baptized every single thing with a meaning such that it all fits together for maximum enjoyment. Synergy, productivity, contentment. Okay, so you can do those things with your life too. So it's basically two P's. Public and policy. You're a public person and what's the policy on any given topic? Practicing your Bible, applying your Bible that you're learning in those two ways. Because you are royal, because you are going to be public forever. Even if you're not a king, you're still part of the body of Christ. We rule the universe forever as an aggregate. And then, of course, you know, within ourselves, we have our kingdoms. So if you're, if you're like using your Bible as to public and policy, 
You're learning more of what it was like for Christ to be down here because that's what he was doing. Because he's training to become king of kings. He knows that from the get-go. So the, the very least uh, value, well, that's not even least, the, the main, I flip it, the, the main value of going through this public policy, even though that's your life too, is you understand his life better. You see him better. You know more what it was like for him to be here. What was he doing when he was here? How was he using the Bible when he was here? I call that seeing through his eyes. It's on my refrigerator. I want to be constantly reminded every time I go to get something to eat. See through his eyes. Because that's the biggest joy of life. You and me. You know? David said, you with me, at the end of Psalm 23. But now, it's you in me, Christ in you, the confidence of glory. Colossians 1, 25-27. That's also another book that talks about the trial. And defeating Satan, I forgot to mention that. Especially starting at, um, what is it, Colossians 1, 18, through the end of the chapter. So you're a public person right now, like it a lump it. And what policy do you establish on anything or everything? And then you also have, a, have to have a no policy. Okay, because God's not a bureaucrat and it's really about maximizing enjoyment and every single thing. Now some among us, and I'm, I'm sort of half of this, some among us have a more engineer uh, mentality, engineer, lawyer, and some among us have a more, I don't know what you want to call it, artsy-fartsy mentality. And I'm somewhere between the two. The artsy-fartsy mentality is really more of a laissez-faire, you know, oh, just do what feels good kind of idea. There's a place for that. And the engineer, lawyers, is about, you know, getting all the rules to fit so they work so beautifully together getting the rules, the procedures, the processes to work together so that all the pieces fit. And that requires a lot of precision. So the artsy-fartsy is just the opposite of the engineer-lawyer mentality. And God's going to have both because, you know, He invented both. So how do you craft the rules for your own learning of Christ which means picking a denomination or no denomination or, you know, how much of the Old Testament that you still want to just observe because even though the covenant has changed, it's, you know, open. You can do whatever you want. The Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath. Every day is now a Sabbath. That's Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3 and 4. Sabbath used to be don't, you know, one day a week you got to sit down and study scripture all day. Well, maybe in your life, at this time in your life, you can do it all day now. Maybe you're working too much and you have to do it later. But you can use Bible in anything, whether you're working or not. See, those are all policy decisions. So, how do you want to rule the kingdom you've got now? Which brings me to the third and final thing. Everything that you have, everything, represents a person. You pick up your mouse. Okay, There is somebody in the eternal state who's a Christian who didn't want to learn Christ but he gets to have the job doing what a mouse can do. When I say mouse, I mean computer mouse. Pointing. Clicking. Selecting. Okay? There is going to be a human equivalent of a dish. In other words, a server. Server of food. Server of things. All the little jobs we know down here are preserved. They're not preserved like 
the way they are down here. In other words, the jobs themselves will be changed um, and probably be light years higher, but not necessarily. And the idea is to accommodate everybody for wherever they grew in Christ. So going to be a whole lot of servants. So you got servants who are mostly things in your life. In our modern society, instead of having people to do stuff, we now got things. We got remote controls, we got mice, we got dishwashers. That All that stuff used to be done by humans. So pretend that they are humans. How do you treat them? How do you think about them? What is life going to be like for some future human if you were king over that person who had the life job like a mouse or a remote control or a dishwasher? That gives you a lot of pause. It does me anyway. When I do menial stuff, I think, oh golly. Somebody just because he won't learn Christ is going to end up having to do this job. I would rather do it myself. I don't want servants. Okay, but they're going to need to be servants. They didn't learn him down here. There's going to be a slot for them based on what they did learn. And for the large majority of people, they didn't learn anything. They learned their works. So that's what they're able to do. You take a skill set with you in your soul when you die. Is your skill set the use of Bible and learning, okay, I'm a public person and learning how to think like that because it's a thinking style. And your policy making, those are all thinking styles. You have Those are executive jobs. Okay, on the other hand, if you spent your life, you know, believing in works, then you chose against the executive style. So you're not going to be a king. So the works that you chose instead are going to be sort of paradigmal of the life you're going to live in eternity. So those are the three things. One, regard yourself as a public person and make you know decisions based on that. Two, treat everything that you want to, can, should, as a policy decision. Invent policies. And of course change them if they don't work. Three, regard everything you own, and I should say everybody around you, as a subject. How do you treat the person then? How do you treat the thing then? If that were your subject in your kingdom. And, you know, it's it's these are really dicey things. It's just an entirely different lifestyle than what we're living down here. Okay? But that's the way even royals down here have to live. Okay? They have to think like that because they are royal down here. Okay, well you're royal down here also, but you're not thinking like that. And you're of a greater royalty, Christ, than the human royalties of the world. So, it's up to you how you craft your spiritual life. We've all got the book in common, but what we do with that book, well, that's a matter of royal prerogative. So, again, public, that's who you are, you're in public. Two, what policies do you develop, adopt, use, change with regard to what topics? Three, Everything you own, everything you got charge over, is or is a potential subject. Everything and everyone. How do you act, treat, what policies do you make in light of that training idea? Because it will become a reality if you reach kingship. So it's a way to practice. You're a king in training. I'm a king in training. So, here's, an, here's a way to look at that. 
Since you're a king in training and I'm a king in training, we can argue with each other, we can talk nicely with each other. It doesn't really matter which one, but we both know that we're both kings in training and we stand or fall, each of us, before our own Lord. So how we talk to each other really is pretty much of a free thing. I don't have authority over you and you don't have authority over me unless we enter into some other kind of human relationship which requires some, you know, an additional dimension like that. But as persons, outside of that additional dimension, you can say whatever you want, I can say whatever I want, you're king over your life, I'm king over my life. So that, that brings about a lot of freedom. We're free to associate or disassociate. And you stand before your Lord, just before I stand before the same Lord. And you got your life with Him, and I got mine. It's all vertical. How we interact horizontally, well, that can be whatever. And we each make decisions about what that's going to be. So public, policy, the things and people around you, as if they were your subject. And above all, of course, all those three, in order to learn the cornerstone, Christ. So you have a better handle on what it was like for him to be here. Peace out.